Three, two, one, activate. We have unleashed the dogs of hell on the first of three featherweight battles, after which there will be a final later on in the series. And Prince of All gets an early flick in there from Rip. Through the air it sails. Up a little fancy for Kitty, which is uh, right in the middle of things there. But it's Rip with the green and yellow showing up early on. Just saw Kitty bottom of the picture. That's Cheese too, being neatly controlled. Kitty again, you see the flipper there of uh, Rip, the pneumatic flipper. Two 9.6 volt motors. Who's that in trouble? Cygnus, but righted and okay. The action is France. Oh, they don't. <laughs> they don't get anywhere near that hammer, do they? And he's squished. <laughs> Look at the size comparison. Oh, dear. Poor Rip. Oh. It's like just crumpling up a, a sweet packet. The pit release has been activated. Growler and Madden spin. Go on, Growler, get down that pit. Away and out of trouble. I think it was uh, Mini Mall in there. Oh, Cygnus! Now, which way will Kinelock go? He's peering out. Prince of All. Caught by Rip, or is it pushing Rip? But Rip had good traction there. Kit in with a little side slam on Cheese 2. Alpha, we haven't seen much of Alpha yet. Alan Young, 18 years of age. Driving and designing. What was that? What on earth was that? Whatever it was is no more. It's no more. Get in the background, there's nothing left. That's what was left of Cygnus. About to be thrust up in the air, I think, from the floor flipper. See how... Oh, maybe not yet. Oh, I see what they, they're, they're doing. They're getting them all together. She's two in there as well. Punctured. Kitty wants to stay out of damage. The clock ticks down. <laughs> That's come down with snow on it! Cease. Oh, dear! That was great! Look at this. Way up you go. <laughs> One's out of the arena. And the other one landed on the moon, I think. Whoa! That was terrific stuff. <laughs> and down the pit too. Don't ask me who went through. I haven't got a clue. Craig will have to tell you. It's the first time in the history of Robot Wars I've been totally lost for words. similar machines. Tornado and Storm 2, both 100 kilos in weight. Storm 2 trying to get in underneath that ground clearance. You see it, shove them to the arena side wall. Oh, and they spun away and crashed into the wall themselves. Tornado, good driving away by Andrew March. Very, very experienced. They're fighting for the fourth time in the wars. Now Tornado, the big heap out towards the angle grinder. Tornado, the experienced machine. Storm 2, the whippersnappers, the new boys. Came through the new Blood Championship route, gaining automatic entry into the UK Championships. Tornado, an invertible machine, can run either way up. Can't get the front scoop in underneath Storm 2 in that mode, though. And Tornado on the defensive momentarily, and again, oh! Some shove there from Storm 2. Tornado bouncing away. When you get two pushing boxes like this, it could come down to durability. Which machine can sustain most damage within? Not exposed damage, not superficial damage, but damage to the machinery, the electronics from so much biffing and bashing. And Storm 2 doing the chasing. A storm and a tornado out there. And a battle that is blowing hot and cold for both. It's Storm 2, the aggressor there. But tornado turning away, dodging, good driving once again, good style. 
Won't mind going up and over Storm 2 like that. It's not sustaining any damage in Storm 2. Not really point scoring to any great degree. That was a good attack, though. Tornado bouncing away. They know they're in a battle here, the defending champions. Let's look at this again. Against your inner wall. Fizzing away and bouncing down. Listen. Can you hear the little flail? Tornado's little flail is not doing much damage. Storm 2 is that? The flail not doing any damage really for Tornado. And Storm 2 on top here. And the ref bot has pressed the pit release. And Tornado's been caught. <sighs> Just away. The champions were very nearly out. Tornado here, I think, on the brink of defeat at the penultimate hurdle of their title defence. I don't think we're going to see a repeat of Chaos 2's historic title defence as Storm 2 nags against the champions. It goes to a judge's decision. Chasing down on Spawn again. The S3, 1,000 RPM, 20 kilo, 18-inch diameter snatch weapon, they call it. The spinning blade rotating, looking fearsome. Spawn again, momentarily silenced and stilled. Up goes its flipper. Down goes the, the pit. Release there. S3 on the charge on Wild Thing. Who's nearest the pit? Wild Thing dances away. What is that next to the pit? Something's come off. S3 on the attack. Spawn again being counted out by the ref bot. These two will be left to fight it out then for a place in the next battle. Spawn again, they've been counted out by the ref bot. We're down to two. Wild Thing and S3, only one to survive. They're in the same control pod. Wild Thing, the aggressor, the more experienced here of the two, I would say. Previous semi finalists on two occasions. S3 has the weaponry. Spawn again. That's the long way home via the pit, says Sergeant Bash. Down you go. That's the last we'll see this series of Spawn again. And I think the judges will have to decide the winners of S3 and Wild Thing. Who stays in? Who goes out? I don't have to make the decision. The real brains do. from Razor then, from the right-hand side of your pitch. In comes Onslaught! Oh, as plucky as ever to take on Razor. Behemoth trying to flip Onslaught, don't know why, it's got a very effective stream aim. Razor trying to all oh, crumple and puncture the front scoop of Behemoth. Now attacking Spawn of Scutter with a sharp teeth front. Trying to puncture Spawn of Scutter as it did versus Ingeterix, and look at Onslaught, the wheels may be spinning. The hearts, though, of Razor fluttering under the attack of Onslaught, tremendous. And Beermoth and Razor now against Spawn of Scutter, but that was the push from Onslaught, which shows tremendous power. Razor takes Spawn of Scutter in a grisly grip, and Attila the Drum... Keeps on trundling on. In comes the ref bot to have a look at Spawn of Scutter. Are they immobilised? Razor almost turned over, though. Now we, we know that Razor can flip itself using that winged claw mechanism. Do you see that? It's over on its side. We know they can run itself. Little help from Onslaught. 
Topsy-turvy. I think Razor should be OK, but Bayamoth is in there and putting pressure on them. And Onslaught, and time is ticking down. Razor will have to prove they are not totally immobilised. Spawn and Stutter, Bayamoth, they're all combining against Razor, the favourite. And Razor up and ready to take on Onslaught. Onslaught on its side. That means it's vulnerable if it's on its side. If it's flipped over, it can stream it, but not if it's on its side. They're OK, they're away. Razor trying to exact some sort of revenge on Beermoth, and there goes the till of the drum. If in trouble, run away, run away, live to fight another day. In they come, little smack of the mace down on Beermoth. Onslaught. <laughs> Snapping away there once again, Onslaught, and Razor both topple. Who can ride themselves the quickest? Onslaught are up. Razor not far behind them there. Look at this, Onslaught, one, two, three, up and over she blows. And Razor just behind. Those are the two impressive robots for me so far in this Annihilator, the most impressive. Again, Razor using that wing mechanism. A till of the drum, a little bit of force, a little bit of power to try and keep them over. And a slam down of the mace. I don't think that's going to cause too much damage, to be brutally honest. Spawn of Stutter on the attack. But Razor here, you know, they're going to have to flick themselves up and over. And Spawn of Stutter, well, they can rue that, ultimately, helping Razor to right themselves. That is not good controlled aggression from Spawn of Stutter. And should it go to the judges, they will be marked down on that. I don't quite know how the judges would mark it to the drum, to be honest. They just seem to be a mad twirling thing to me. Razor puncturing Bearmoth right behind the scoop. Look, it's got in on the scoop mechanism, Razor, to try and disable the scoop of Bearmoth, trying to cut the weapon effectively. It's a pneumatic scoop. Oh! In on the side now of Bearmoth, taking punishment. The great 80-kilo machine from Hemel Hempstead. Attila the drum buffets. Bearmoth tries to ride the pressure from Razor. Has a chance to get away, but it's not the quickest at six miles an hour. Razor here, like a dog with a bone. After Bearmoth, it will not let it alone. It's trying to worry it to row bot oblivion. Spawn of Scutter trying to stay out of trouble and Oblivion wisely also because this is the duel that matters now. It's how long Bearmoth can survive. And Michael and Anthony Pritchard, the brothers, with Kane Aston in support as well, trying to steer Bearmoth out of trouble. I don't think they can. I don't think it's moving at all. I think Bearmoth have been immobilised. I think the end is nigh for them. Razor worrying it tenaciously. Spawn of Scutter there, top of your picture, and of course, yes, that's another the drum. And it's bam off for me who will go out here. Onslaught, a little bit of a busy run, but stay out of trouble, Onslaught. That's the message for them now. With Alan Wood, the Harpo Marks look alike, and his son David and Mark Holland in the team. And this is Spawn of Scutter under pressure from Razor. Had enough of Bearmoth. They think Bearmoth the finish. Well, it is moving, but only just now. Spawn of Scutter. Look at that. They think they're out. Spawn of Scutter, the Essex boys. Think they've been immobilised. And look at this attack on Attila the Trump now from Onslaught. It's all happening in front of us in the Northern Annihilator. Something came off there. Bearmoth are out of it. Spawn of Scutter, have they survived? Goodness me. to start heat one of the sick wars with the reigning champions razor there at the bottom of your picture turning to have a go at brutus maximus but chased into the corner by raging reality getting away spinning once again into the safety of the arena center there the big ponderous machine brutus maximus and taking on razor once again and razor trying to get in there on one of the tires and what was that being flipped wasp went into the air but look at razor crushing in here on the tires of brutus maximus which surely has not long left to survive seem to be deflated there's the team captain of brutus maximus trying to get more out of his boys jody Justina. wasp is on its size now razor trying to take on Raging reality, back comes Brutus Maximus. Only two survived this first melee. Wasp seems to be out of it. Razor pushing against Raging Reality, which is now caught between a rock and a hard place.
it's another word between Razor and Sergeant Bash, but he's still trying to gain momentum. Brutus Maximus, we saw there, is still alive, just trundling to the top of the abyss, but Razor has control and the clutch on raging reality. And once again, going for the vulnerable spot. The tires with the crushing pick, just saw there the back of Vinnie Blunt, balding head there in the control pod. Sergeant Bash looks on, so does the ref bot. Brutus Maximus, a little bit lopsided, but still trundling. Razor's had a go at all of them, it seems to me. Where's Wasp in all this? Oh, overturn, over and out. Over to you, Sir Killalot, I would have thought for the Wasp boys. We know there's no sting in there. And we know the end of the tail is nigh for Wasp. Buzz off and out of here. And fly, fly away to fight another day. It looks gruesome. Now there's Raging Reality and a little flip from them on Brutus Maximus. Razor had a look. Brutus Maximus, can they overturn? Wasp, we know he's finished. Oh, look at the shredding though. Of that drill. And there's the pit release button. Down goes the pit. That's been activated out there on the arena. And they want someone to go down in the pit. You see the sparks from the arena side walls there? Another one of our weapons. And now you can see Razor in on those bicycle wheels we were telling you about. All along, that was going to be a weak link for Brutus Maximus. So Killalot also has a little bit of a feel and a growth. Very unpleasant to think about, so is that washing machine suspended above the arena. It's the ultimate of the arena weapons, the drop zone. More on that later, the wheel goes into the pit of oblivion. Off Brutus Maximus, three wheels left on their wagon. And they know where their journey's going to end. We're on the flame pit right now. So burnt bicycle wheels. Come into the arena with wooden bicycle wheels and petrol driven. What were they thinking about? And the ref bot is thinking about the count of Brutus Maximus from Bradford are heading out. Smiles on their faces, 10 on the clock. They're out, says the crowd. Gone from the sick Robot Wars battles in this first heat. The mayhem, though, goes on. Razor on Wasp. Down comes that great crushing. You see the holes there? Drilled in Razor. That is to cut down on the amount of weight they have in the arena. Up comes Brutus Maximus and they're long gone. Raging Reality tossed them out of the arena. I like Raging Reality slippy enough. Seat is caught. Wasp counted out. Rob Williams over with Kelly and Chris Ford. You've gone. And we know now the team's through. Raging Reality and the reigning champions Razor. Stuart Pearson build bombs, but also detonators as a young age. Like the Saurus, just rolled over by Bulldog Breed. Roll over for a tickle on the tongue, got straight up, which is good to see. Stinger with the great axe on the back, slamming down like a mighty pendulum. They say it's better than the pizza cutter. Well, boys, we didn't see the pizza cutter last time round. You were in the pit too quickly. Spike Saurus going good mobility up to 17 miles an hour. On the right hand side, pulled up 3 2 on the left with a front flipper. Bang, bang, bang goes Stinger. On the arena floor, hey! The hoppity hop for Stinger. All the controls, by the way, the motors, the power electronics are mounted in the wheel. Spike the Saurus bounces down, a little bit lucky. Stinger flies around. Does a bit of a wheelie and a spin, pulled up Reed. A lot more cursory in its approach. More pensive, taking on Spikosaurus and rolling it. Shunt came out briefly, Spikosaurus attacked Stinger. Stinger up on one side. It's mad, isn't it, Stinger? Look at this. He doesn't care, Stinger. Bulldog Breed flew it up in the air, comes back down. <laughs> You're supposed to attack the other robots in the house robots, not the arena floor with the weapon. Who's in control of that Stinger weapon? Who's driving it? Is there anyone there at home? Meanwhile, Spikosaurus is locked onto the arena wall. We saw that. Comes out now flying. Stinger revolves madly. Great value. In comes Bulldog Breed. Two with a little...
flick underneath Spikelosaurus again. This is very close, you know. Stinger's doing its own thing out there. Brother Looney, who dances by himself in the disco on a Friday night. You've all seen them. You've all been there. Well, I have. I know. Uh, uh, that's another point, though. This is shunting on Spikelosaurus. A bulldog breeds. Slams Spikelosaurus almost back in the CPZ now. Shunt came out very, very hungrily and said, Bulldog, you're mine. Come on. Oh, hey, Stinger in on the attack again. Bulldog breed choose. Uh, Lifting ramp seem to be open, stuck open, is it stuck open? I wonder, hey, gets the axe from Shunt anyway, I don't think it's going to be closing at all. Stinger, there's the bag lab, who's he? Who was that in there? With the great curly bird. Great stuff, Stinger, spinning, Spikosaurus flipping. He's pointing, he's flipping, barking, that's what he is. And the bulldog stands still, goes to the judges. Already off and underway. Up to 23 miles an hour. Top speeds. Oh, Steel Avenger has pinned itself on the floor and was lucky to get away. The one centimeter ground clearance exposed as Storm 2 drove in underneath again. 18 horsepower. Tries to take on the ref. What Storm 2? In underneath Steel Avenger again. Let me remind you, they were new blood champions, Storm 2. They won that title to qualify for this, the UK series, the seventh wars. And they are taking it by storm. But Steel Avenger, as we've mentioned time and time again, so experienced, fighting in a fourth wars and buffeting Storm 2, but causing great damage, I would imagine. What are they trying to do? Just... Wear Storm 2 down by dancing away. Storm 2 pressurizing. Steel Avenger running away. And again, turning for safety in space in the war zone. Pursue, crumple now, gone! Storm 2, Six. the Heat winners, and through to the series semi final. And a shake of the head by John Willoughby because he knew Steel Avenger simply in the end couldn't avoid defeat. Storm 2 picked it up, drove, and hammered it out. The power of the charge rippled the plexiglass that surrounds the Warzone Arena. And the Storm 2 team delighted. Controls with Gemma alongside him. They'll try and clamp and hold on and hold on to their reasoning and hold on to a place in the competition. I'll tell you what, they aren't doing badly to stay. Oh, left of that attack there! Mighty blow from the Terra Hurt and the little cluster boxer out there as well. Belonging to the Nuts team. There we see Rapid in underneath and flipping Jellyfish into the air. Wrap it with that incredible flipper. Well armored too. 15 times more powerful than any other flipper ever built. But where are they in the competition now? In after nuts. Turning, spinning, control from them. Oh, ho, 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 ho. What about this? Oh, Matilda. Don't mess with the rear end of Matilda. Oh, it's a grisly place to be. 
and that's a doomed place to be. Nuts! Oh, the nutty boys! Out! One robot forlorn and forgotten. Three remain. A little cluster box of nuts is still out there, trying to create nuisance value more than anything else. No, no, no more firing, no more firing. That mighty acts of terahertz, the experienced John Reed in there. And here we have terahertz chasing after Rapid. They're leaving Jellyfish alone because they think Jellyfish is immobilised and spinning awkwardly, but going nowhere. This is all about the damage now that terahertz can cause on Rapid, thinking about nature in the competition, good planning, good tactics here by John Reed. Cease is cool. Just did enough, probably. Nice. Just. Oh up their sleeve but Bryce Fighter hardly harmless and they come forward now and immediately go on the attack on Wild Thing. Oh Wild Thing got dangerously broadside on and that's where a flipper can be its most destructive. Wild Thing of course here have the spinning disc which can cause real mayhem to Armory but Bryce Fighter and the Alcock boys and there we can see Bill Moores their great pals seem to be okay with standing that attack a wild thing which still seems to be wobbly on the tyres and now flipped over. Prize fighter dodging, dancing around the ring and waited for the opportunity to get that jab in. Good boxing in the Robot Wars arena. Wild thing now is seeing stars. Has to get back into the fight and quickly flicked again. And once more. Now you need to get out of that CPZ, Price Fighter. Wild Thing in trouble, but Price Fighter opening itself up there momentarily for an attack by a house robot, but he's in underneath Wild Thing again. Price Fighter knocked out in the first round of Robot Wars 3 and Robot Wars 4. Wild Thing twice a series semi finalist, but I don't think we'll be going through to the series semi finals this time around. The wheel wobbles on top, underneath the wheel churns and turns and tries to get some purchase on the arena floor to flip Wild Thing up and over. It's not going to happen. Price Fighter releasing the, the pit of doom. Wild Thing crashes down. Time is running out for you, Nick Adams. And daughter Isabel, who controls the stream act with Jake, who also has a hand on the spinning disc. They've got to push Price Fighter towards the pit! Wild Thing, can they come back in? Price Fighter digging in! Put the old brakes on there, rather sharpish, didn't they? Tuck in and save themselves! And Nick Adams nearly pulled it out of the fire there! May yet do so! One tactic! Push Price Fighter towards the pit! There will be irony in there because Price Fighter activated the pit release! What a good battle this has been! A fitting heat final! Tremendous stuff for a place in the series. Semi-finals later on, of course. Wild Thing at the second stick down tries to push Price Fighter into an angle grinder. Gonna go to the judges. Very, very close. Price Fighter dominant early on. The Wild Six. Thing fighting back. Well, wow. terrific stuff. Going in with that early onslaught, with the flipper, over those tough as nails, but south right, of course, very strong armour to protect the electrics within, big horizontal CO2 crushes as well, once more Robo Chicken flips, will they though have left all their eggs in one basket by getting in too many flips early on, to expend the energy, I wonder, Robo Chicken flies away, on something of a wing and a prayer, some might say here. Tough as nails, henpecked thus far. Robo Chicken with mascot. 
Fighting bravely on. Again, look. Tries to get that flipper underneath the side. The robot clearance. Three centimeters there to the arena floor. And that is vulnerable. That is the Achilles heel of Tupper's Nails. And Robo Chicken, I think, is on top of this stage. Tupper's Nails seems to have lost control and power in one of the wheels, has it? Robo Chicken here could be on the verge of a, of a very famous victory. No, Tupper's Nails is fully mobile again, skittering across the arena floor. Robo Chicken on the prowl. This is a very, very good final. Robo Chicken. If it has a wishbone in that body, it would be to flip Tupper's Nails out of the arena, I'm sure, and try it. How much energy is it expending here? Tupper's Nails up against it. I thought it would all be over by now. This is brilliant stuff by Robo Chicken. They've been the best machine in this heat final for me. But they know they have to escape the clutches of the dust machine. They just did, and I think they were trying to draw Tupper's Nails onto the pit. Oh, no! Just away, just away. Well, he may be hung over Farron White, but his driving skill there was sufficient to get him away from Tupper's Nails. But are they pinned here? The angle grinder causing sparks. What damage to Robo Chicken? Robo Chicken away once again. There is, a, I think, no damage caused to Robo Chicken either by the angle grinder or the pincers of Tupper's Nails. To me, I'll have to see a close-up again. There seems to be a hole in Robo Chicken. Shunt tried its luck. And the grimace on the face of the finalists, the heat finalists. This is for a place in the series semi-finals. Robo Chicken, you can see the damage there. And I think they expended too much energy early on without managing to finish off Tupper's Nails. Suddenly, the heat finalist turned, hasn't it? See the damage. It'll go to the judges, which I think is splendid. Oh, please go to the judges. Just survive Robo Chicken. They deserve that. Tupper's Nails finishing. Perhaps in the ascendancy, but oh, what a good final. And that's going to be very close because of all the work Robo Chicken did early on.